I'm going to do something uncharacteristic. I want a selfie. Can I get a selfie? I want to put this on YouTube. I want to put this on. Uh, come on. I know. I know. Just, just, I know I don't get everybody, but we're just going to y'all at least put your hands up or something. Yeah. So, yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. I was, as some of you received uh, an email I didn't send to the larger group, but um, I left the manual at home. But I was shopping in Ikea recently. I have a new home, and so I I went there to uh, purchase a pillow. Because I've had one pillow for about three years, and I had one pillow that was just, I had two pillows, but one pillow was better than the other, and for three years, it's just one better pillow. It's one of those memory phones, and I just didn't have the money to get two pillows, and so uh, the Lord was gracious, and so um, I finally worked, saved up enough money to get another pillow, and so I was just like, where can I go? So Ikea, you know, I'm sure they have a big warehouse, and so... So I go to Ikea to get this memory foam pillow, and um, I didn't know that Ikea was like a city. And so (laughs) literally with zip codes, like, and my eyes were hurting. I couldn't see anything. So I'm like, I'm looking like this, literally. I'm in there all day. It was, I left and came back to try to get the pillow. I literally left for a few hours and came back. Um, But... Um, I left there, uh, didn't get the pillow, (laughs) but I left with like this sofa to go in my living room, (laughs) because I got rocking chairs, I don't don't have a traditional living room, I just like minimalist, and so I got this nice little sofa wasn't on the agenda, it's in the living room, and I I got a desk to go in another room. I got a bookshelf, you know, like, it wasn't, it wasn't on my agenda to, I came there looking for a pillow, left there with everything else but a pillow. Thing about it, though, is that I walked into this place, and I, I sincerely said to myself, there's no way I'm going to be able to navigate myself. There are no signs, it just, this is too much, and so I saw this square box, I was following somebody else, and they went in there, they got this pencil and this piece of paper, so I was like, all right, when I get this pencil and this piece of paper, and it gives you the instructions because where you're about to go, you need to take details and some notes so that you can get the best experience, you know, in Ikea. And so I was like, notes? Why do you need notes? Why do you need pencil and paper and notes so that you can go and get what you come? Can you just shop like normal places? And so I'm glad they knew more than I knew. So you go and if you see something you like, you um, you take notes on the, you know, where you found it and what it is because the displays captivate you. You know, the displays, it looks so, why is it that the displays look so much better on the display than they do it at your home when you finally get it? When you get what you thought you wanted, it doesn't look the same after you get it. Somebody said, I know he's going somewhere with that. And so I took down a few things. I wrote down things that I thought I wanted only to realize that I didn't want them. But I, I did, you know, so I, you know, process of elimination. So I put down that sofa and a couple other sofas. And, and finally I went and, you know, and then I have this concierge or someone who just stands there waiting on me to give him what I, I have. And then he goes and he finds everything and he brings it back for me. It was so pleasant of an experience that I took these details that I thought, that everything came already assembled. That's just, it, this is how it looks. In, in I, everything comes assembled because everything looks immaculate. And he's like, yeah, all you got to do is give his name and we're going to bring everything. So I'm like, so do you bring it home for free? And he's like, uh, no. Uh, is it already assembled? He said, uh, some things, but most of no. it, it takes a little bit, you know, just a little, you know, not a lot of assembly. Okay, so it unfortunately didn't come assembled. So that meant I had to have the proper tools um, to be able to assemble these things. And so he got everything, you know, then they went out there, they got everything they needed and they brought it right there to, to my vehicle and they helped me to load it to my vehicle. It was pleasant. Um, got home, you know, after stuffing everything in my Jeep and, um, 
I opened it up. As to be expected, there were instructions. And I don't really, men for the most part, since we're talking about men, gentlemen speak today. Men don't really do well with instruction manuals. We just don't because it's just unnecessary, right? You know, it just takes too much time. We see the image on the front of the instruction manual, and then we understand how to put this together. That's how, that's how it works. We, uh, am I? I just wanted to make sure that they were on my, on my, on my squad, you know. Like, you, all you need to do is see the image, and then we're going to produce the image because we see what it needs to look like. And we don't need you to tell us how to do it. So I opened it up, and I saw the image. It's only like, and the instruction manual was so simple, though. Like, I, I was like, I don't need no instruction manual. I picked it up. I was like, but it's so thin. So I looked at it. They just gave you pictures. X, no, yes. No, Yes. I was like, okay. Then they gave me the tools. So they gave me the tools. They told me what to do or not to do. Very simple. And so I still messed up. So I'm following the instructions only to the couch to have the arms on the wrong. So I have to take it back apart and sweat. And, you know, it's unnecessary. But I got the tools. And the desk, I did the same thing with the desk. It just was unnecessary. Nobody feel like putting all this stuff together. It should just come already assembled. Don't we just want it just to come a symbol? So finally, after two days, because I took <laughs> I know in my notes that I sent you all, I said one day that was a tattletale, right? That was, that was a lie. It took two days. Um, got back to it, and finally, I assembled everything. And I said to myself, though, what if relationships, what if marriages came with an instruction manual? When you meet somebody, you're given notes, you take your notes, you know, and the thing about us is that we, we want to be able to get the same person that is advertised on social media. When I saw you posting and when I saw you walking and now I see you, those are not the same people. Why is it that before I married you, that's one of the fears that men have, don't, don't tattletale, Isaac, is, is, that, is that we want to know how much are you going to change after we get married. And so you, you, you present to us something that looks like it's already assembled, only for us to have to, not men, but everybody, men and women, only for us to have to make an agreement to realize that we have to put you together because you're not already assembled, but you present yourself as being assembled. What if we came with instruction manuals? Yes, we'll still make some mistakes, but at least we'll know where we need to make the corrections. What if we came with an instruction manual like our identification cards? As soon as you look like you're remotely interested in me, I just give you my instruction manual, let you know <laughs> that I don't know if you want to bark up this tree, uh, because barking up this tree is a handful, listen, you know, uh, you know, look, these are no, yes, no, 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 yes. No, 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 yes. And maybe you say, you know what? Mm, I may want to keep shopping. It would save us time. It would, I'm teaching already. It would save us time. It would save us baby daddy issues. It would save us baby mama drama. It would save us so much heartache if you just gave me that doggone instruction manual and make sure it was simplified. I don't need an encyclopedia. <laughs> but unfortunately, people, dating, relationships, and marriages, you can read all the books you want to read. You can go to all the counseling you want to go to. Instructions are not included. But what I think is absolutely wonderful, though, I didn't, have, I didn't have a chance to experience this myself. But why not be able to hear from men? Why not be able to hear from women in a place that we can just be honest and transparent and vulnerable and just, just have a conversation, a conversation where you all don't exist and we just have a table talk. 
and you all get to listen in on the conversation because there's questions that you submitted, there's questions that you have, but there's just things that we want to talk about, things that we know that you want us to answer, and we'll just try to engage in those conversations. And I need my men in the room on Father's Day to support us. Because we are outnumbered, and we are always outnumbered, so we need you if you believe in something, if you want to stand up and give us a woo, 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 or if, if your boo is next to you or your wife is next to you, just give the head nod and just... <laughs> I feel it in the spirit, the head nod, you know, because you got to go home and you ain't trying to go home to no three-hour conversation about why you did that. <laughs> All right, so I have my friend Scott who will kind of launch us into this discussion. Women, we want you to provide us the same attentiveness, the same um, respect because on next week we'll allow you all a panel of just a couple of women. We could have had 10 men, but I wanted some newer blood and some newer experiences. And I think you'll see what I've tried to accomplish with today's panel and today's table talk. Scott is going to jump. We'll jump right on into this thing. Are y'all ready? Yes. We can't right. hear you. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Let's go ahead and get it started here. Be let's... easy. Be easy. Okay. Be easy, I, know I, was a little bit, I got a little bit crunk there a minute yeah, ago. I'm, no, I'm sorry. I'm to get, I have to get corrected at times. And I know this. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're just going to go ahead and introduce the squad, the AKA the panel. We'll go ahead and start off with oh. our first gentleman yeah, here in the tan shirt. My friend, if you would, please give us your name, age, and relationship status. Or just give us some information about you. <laughs> okay, okay. I told you be easy, man. Okay, uh, my name's Tony Moden, and... Uh, uh, I'm divorced. I've been divorced for several years now. Uh, I have five kids, and uh, I've been here at HSC for, for a year and a half, and uh, I guess that's about it for me. We appreciate that. How are you? How are you? All right, Tony, that's my brother in Christ. Next, David, tell us a little bit about yourself, please. Well, good morning. Uh, mm -hmm. My name is David Weir. I've been a member of church uh, here at Cope for about, um, I guess, about five years, but I've been going here about 12 years. And I've only been a member of this, this group for about six weeks or so. <clears throat> Amen. Uh, it's been pretty spectacular for me to, uh, to be around people that are uh, like me, and I thank you for Isaac for that. Um, I'm 70 years old. Uh, I've got a lot. Of, I've got a lot of experience. You just got. You just got. You just got a couple years. You just got a couple years on me. Just I got a couple lot of years. experience and, and, and a lot of things, especially marriage. <laughs> I've been mar married twice, uh, and uh, for all the wrong reasons. Um, I'm involved with somebody now that God put in my life, and uh, I can't thank Him enough for that. But uh, we both. We both. That's an amen right there, y'all. He's uh, uh, has answered my prayers totally, and uh, I expect that you know that I don't have any expectations whatsoever. But the important thing is that he put that person in my life that uh, is what I needed. He knows what I needed. Uh, so you currently you currently seeing someone? Yes. Yeah, amen. Right. Amen. We we appreciate you for that trans mm -hmm. that God's transparent. Good. Do you have any children? I, I'm sorry. Yes, I do. I've got one daughter from a previous marriage, and she lives here in Memphis. So. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you so much, David. We are very blessed and honored to have you here on the squad. All right. Rocky, we got it, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Rocky Jackson. Um, I forgot all the questions y'all told us. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, all I'm right. Just I'm just playing. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I do have a daughter. She's 10 years old. Um, as far as my relationship status... I am in a relationship with God right now. Uh, so, uh, uh, pause, pause real quick. Uh, <clears throat> trust me on this, trust me on this. <clears throat> I have these men up here to help me to communicate, gentlemen speak. It's, this is not like speed dating, you know, you know, somebody here, I mean, I'm in love with Jesus. Then it's like, ah, mm, okay, mm, you know, so I just, you know, just want you all to kind of, you know, just 
turn it down a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Keep on, brother, keep on, keep on. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, but that's it. I'm single, just in a relationship with God right now, just trying to figure myself out before I enter into anything. How old are you? I'm 31 years old. We have 31, a daughter. Right. Have you been married before? No. Have not been married before. Uh, you're 31 uh, with a daughter, uh, single, um, 70 years old. You have one daughter. You've been married twice. Um, and you are, you are 60. You've been married before. Five. five kids, five children, uh, six years old. And um, are you, you know, on, on, the, on the market? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, you know, in a relationship right now. Use the uh, microphone, please, my hey, I think that's a just, yes, just, ladies. Just, I think on. that's a Y'all yes. Y'all ain't got to get all crunk out there. I'm just saying. They're like, we can't hear his answer. Like, listen. <laughs> listen. I got you. I got you. I know. Let me say something. I know. We're having gentlemen speak. I know that men are a commodity. I get it. I get it. You find a man in church is a unicorn. I mean, a man is single. <laughs> You know, like it's a unicorn, and man, like I'm trying to get my life right. That that's a unicorn, and I want to find out more about that unicorn. They're like, ha ha. Uh, we want to know what's his relationship status. I told y'all, calm down. You know. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, at this time, I'm not in a relationship. You know, uh, just trying to uh, figure out, you know, what direction I, I really want to go in, and, and, and things like that. Mostly trying to take my time and make a, a good decision. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Um, my name is, is Isaac Curry, and um, I've never been married before. And uh, uh, I am on the, I'm, I'm closer to 40 than I am 30. So if you round up my age, then I'm closer to 40 uh, and um, not married. Um, uh, I am to tell you all that uh, my, my last relationship, which I know they didn't divulge, as you know, I know somebody said, why don't men talk? I know, I know, I know you want to ask that question. It's like, it's like pulling teeth to get us to sometimes share some things. But um, so previous relationship, uh, it's about a year or so ago, um, and that relationship was... Um, one that I had developed after my engagement that you all have heard about that was several years ago. Um, thing is, um, for me, and, and if I am transparent, if I kind of lead the way, then the brethren will follow. Uh, but the thing is about that relationship, as pleasant and wonderful of a woman that she uh, is, um, she was straight out of a divorce and I was straight out, out of a broken engagement. So we made our relationship rehabilitation. Now I'm gonna pause right there. If you come at week three, where we talk about sabotage, the six behaviors that undermine love, we'll talk more about that. Unpause. Um, tried to date recently, um, but unsuccessful. Um, recent past, and it was just unsuccessful. So um, I'm single, um, and I'm in a relationship with Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> Unicorns. <clears throat> uh, Scott, where you at? Where you at, Scott? Where you at, Scott? All right, I'm right here. You know where I'm at. Be easy, be easy, be All easy. All right, I know you're trying to get a little this morning. I got me turned up here. So, HSC, we're going to go ahead and get this started with our panel. And I'm going to go ahead and get us started with a, the first question, and it's going to be a two-part question. Gentlemen of the squad of the panel, have you ever told a woman you needed space or wasn't ready for a relationship and why? What's Who, the second part of it? The second part is, what are some reasons men tell women this and pull back from relationships. Is that a good question, y'all? Somebody said that too loud. So if I understand the question for the brethren, um, 
what are some reasons, um, in general sense, we believe men pull back from relationships uh, or reasons men tell women uh, perhaps they are not ready um, for a relationship or um, they, they just pull back? What are some reasons? Um, I believe is ultimately, now whether or not you say that you've ever done that, I've done it before, uh, I'm guilty of that, or not even guilty, I've done it before, yeah, of course. Uh, so what are some reasons? Gentlemen, do you have anything you wanna add? All right, Rocky, you picked it up pretty quickly, all right. <laughs> I want my name to be Rocky, man, you know, like, why my name couldn't be Rocky? I'm sorry, man. He's Come a on. fighter. Yes, yeah, so I have done that before. I, I think my first time doing that was in like seventh grade. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said, seventh grade, I I was focused on basketball, everything. Uh, girl wanted to be my girlfriend. She was calling my phone. I was telling my mama, "Hey, tell her I'm busy. Mm -hmm. I want to talk." Mm -hmm. And at school, I told her, "No, I'm not ready for a relationship. I don't want a girlfriend." And then two weeks later, I was in a relationship so, with her or somebody else. Somebody else. Ah. Uh. All yeah, right, so, a, so before people say, we don't want to hear about seventh grade, there is a cycle. There is a principle at hand right. where I'm trying to date him, but he's not interested. He told me he, was, he didn't want a relationship and he wasn't ready for a relationship, but then he just got married to somebody else. Yeah, so that's why I, I, I prefaced what I was about to say with that seventh grade experience because as a man, it ain't no hold back in a man, I think, in my opinion. When a man wants something or he's interested in something or something is a priority for him, it ain't no hold back, no pull back. You ain't, you're, not, you're not stepping on the brakes at all. So I think, and not to sure. put a damper on anybody's spirit, but I think when a man tells you, I need space or I'm not ready for a relationship, you're not a priority, or he's just not that interested or somebody else like has his mind or something like that, because I have done that since I've been older, and since I've been an adult, and every time I've done that, it wasn't because I was super interested in her and just wanted to take things slow or wanted to fill her out. It was really because, you know, she was cool, she all right, but yeah. it's somebody else that got my eye right now. So. Sure. So, so on one hand, we have a divided loyalty or divided attention. Uh, you could be interested in someone else or and or I think one thing is you can not be that into someone, but you don't want to hurt their feelings. And so in a way of not hurting someone's feelings, um, a man may tell you that he's just um, not ready for a relationship and could very well see someone else who captivates his attention, um, which is something I think we'll talk about, and he can pursue something with them. So one thing I think uh, if we all agree, and one reason what I, I love diversity, and that's what we do, and God has called us to it, because it's not an easy thing, but he's what he called us to. So we have a stage, a panel filled with different generations, right? Uh, different cultures, different backgrounds. So what happens is we all, all four of us, view things slightly different, and there's beauty in that. And so you want to be able to get that perspective from 70, from 60, from 30, from 40, and, and see... Um, Maybe if this can be fruit for you. Hold on, that's just one. Want to make sure the brethren don't have something that you want to add to that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, uh, normally if I if I'm just not interested, I'm going to be very honest about it. Sure. You know, and I'm going to. Oh yeah. But by the way, we're having table talk, so if we're not looking at you, it's because we're just talking to each other, and you know, we, we forget that part. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, it's not that it's necessarily someone else, but it's just for me and timing. Yeah. Know? And if I say I'm not, you know, ready for the relationship, I'm also looking at that person and saying, well, maybe that person's not really ready. Mm -hmm. Because you got to look at it from both ways, mm -hmm. you know, from both people. Yeah. You know, uh, that person may Appear think ready. that they, yeah, that they're ready for the relationship, but uh, all the signs are saying no. Hmm. You know, not not now. Not this is not the season for. It. Hmm. Right, right. I think I think I think that's 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 good. So from from Tony's perspective, and I'm gonna let you know. I'm just I'm not gonna beat around the bush, but I'm also gonna pay attention to myself and whether I'm ready for it. And we're in the room where we can disagree and add on because we view things and we have different perspectives. And he's also saying that 
Um, I'm looking at you. You may think you're ready, you know. You may think, but, I, but I've been paying attention, you know, and I don't think that it, it, timing, the word he used was timing. Yes, sir. Uh, just to underscore what these two guys have said, that's exactly right, timing, because your timing may not be my time. Mm -hmm. You know, we, sometimes we rush into that and uh, into a relationship and r realize that the timing is all off. And uh, it'd be better, like Tony said, to be honest about it up front if you know about it. And then, or when you do know about it, bring yeah. it up. And, uh, I, th I think that's, uh, that, that's pretty fair. I've been, gentlemen, I've been in a situation, I've, I've, I've used that I'm not ready for a relationship. And I may want one, but I just don't, I don't see one with that person, right? Um, and I, I don't want to be mean about it, you know? Um, Timing has also been a situation because I think for men, what most women don't understand is that women have a demand for men to be at a, to have a house, to have 401k, to be established, to be all these things, and they want the relationship right now or the marriage right now. And most men, we want to be we want to be established before we go pursuing. A relationship and so they want the relationship marriage now but then they also want you to be established and sometimes those things you know just don't come so easily I think uh, for me I've also used that because I just get too much going on and I don't think that you can handle what I have going on because then there is the, the attention that women need right and they desire and they want and I don't think I can give you the attention that you desire because if you knew what my life consisted of we will probably be arguing at the very onset on the fact that I don't have time for you. And so there's a level of insecurity that I have found that I attract, you know. And so then you have to be in a, a constant place of reassuring a person that you're interested and that you want to be there and you kind of get tired of that. But one thing I think I want to mention, though, is that I think men... I've, I'm, in, I'm in a fraternity, so I've, look, I've used all my grace up in college. <laughs> I use it all up. <laughs> Men will tell you they're not ready because, one, they realize you're not in easy school. You're just not going to be easy. I don't want a relationship with you. I want somebody to kind of hang with, chill, and, you know, whatever, whatever. And it's not going to be easy, so... Let's just not do this. Or he may have paid attention to you because you have to know that men are always watching, even when we look like we're not watching, right? He also may recognize that you're just too much. You get to get too, you're too much. It's, it's going to be too hard of work. Like, <laughs> you're laughing, but you, wanna, you want gentlemen to speak. You know, you want gentlemen to speak. And the truth is... And I want my brethren to be able to disagree with me because that's where the beauty is because I depend especially on these two men to be able to say, well, no, from where we come from, we just tell it like it is or whatever the case is. But, yeah, I think um, I look at you and you just got like you, it's too much. It's going to be too much work. And I don't think I have the bandwidth, you know, or the wherewithal um, to be able to give you that, you know. And so. I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not ready, you know. Um, the last thing is this, though. It's a pace thing, P-A-C-E. Because I think some men will tell you that they're not interested in pursuing or they may cut off the relationship that was p potentially promising for marriage because he feels like he's always at a constant ultimatum of either we get married, move at your pace and get married, or nothing at all. And so he wakes up and he's in this relationship and it's always this ultimatum of move at your pace, let's get married or nothing at all. And so what I believe some men say, and I, and I can agree with this, is that you're moving at your pace and I don't want to move at your pace. I want to move at my pace. And you're forcing me to move at your pace. And, I don't, and, and so I don't want to move at your pace. And so I'd much rather... To, this is this is not going to work work out, and so you have to. And I know men, women would say, "Well, what do you do with that?" I think it's something that you have to ask yourself this question: One, can you accept him the way he is, moving at the pace that he moves? Can you accept him just like he is? One, two, you have to ask yourself: 
Am I trying to lock him into my romantic timeline that I have set for my own self? Or is he just moving absolutely too slow? Because we would say, I'm 43. I ain't got time for this. When I meet him, he need to already be getting the ring. Because otherwise, uh, and so you have this biological timeline that you've constructed. Not God has convicted you and given it to you. And so I can, you know, so you, 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 you meet, I talk to guys, I, I be around guys. And so one of the common thing is, you know, like, She's always talking about marriage. And I think that you need to be able to talk about marriage. You need to be able to check a man on his emotional, you know, slow pace. You need to be able to have a conversation with them. But I think when it becomes a constant ultimatum, I believe that's where, you know, friction in the relationship or dating or potential marriage happens. What do you all think? Anything you disagree with? No, let me, let me comment on what you just sure. said. Regardless if you're married or not, communication is absolutely key to understanding the other person. Mm -hmm. If you can't communicate, you don't know you what speak they're, what they're yeah, doing. You know, if you can't communicate, you don't really know what's going on. Sure. And the relationship is at risk. Mm -hmm. That's just really important to that. It's one of the fundamentals of it. And, and I, think that's, I think that's important and that's loaded, though. I think that communication is loaded. I'm going to tell you why. Because we have to have a, an entire session, the fourth session, I think, where we talk about um, how to disagree well or something like that. I can't remember what the fourth one is, but we're talking about communication because we communicate different. We use different language. We hear something different. Men speak A, B. Yep. Women speak A, B through C, you know. <laughs> and, and, and so... We spend most of our lives single and then expect to get in a relationship in three and six months and to be able to move and function so clearly, right? So we spend most of our lives by ourselves and functioning by ourselves, but then we expect for everything to be clear in communication. You're absolutely right. I think communication is key, but then that's even, you know, its own, you know, scenario because even if I tell you how I feel, very frank, then I hurt your feelings, you know, and then it's, I don't care, and I'm insensitive, you know, and then I don't get it, and then when you tell me how you feel, you're telling me how you feel, and it can be, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to be careful not to lose the, lose the fan base, you know, uh, but no, so okay, so anything you want to add, I mean anything, what you got? You got something on that? Well, I mean, I totally agree with that. I, I think, uh, Men, we can be we can be really selfish at times. True. And when I say selfish, I say that with quotations around it because of the fact that um, I mean it, I feel like as a man, and I, I mean I don't want to speak for all men, but we're wired to be goal oriented, to be ambitious. We're super independent. We have like a lot of things that we set for ourselves in order that that we're taught from kids that. Uh, signify success in a man's life. Sure. And you want to attain those things, as you, as you stated, you want to attain those things and have your life set up before you make those type of decisions sure. to, to share a life with somebody, to start a family. Sure. You want to already have things in order. And I mean, I've actually, uh, I was in a relationship with someone for five years and had them move to a completely whole nother state on me yeah. because I wasn't ready to move forward with marriage, wasn't really discussing marriage. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like we were married. We had been living together for maybe five years. Sure. In all honesty, I probably was moving too slow, but it was because I was starting a woodworking company up. I was coaching basketball. I was teaching high school. I was t coaching baseball. I was doing all these different things that made me happy as a man. I was, in other people's eyes, successful. I had these dreams, had these goals, had these ambitions, and I was solely focused on those. So basically, she was just like a throw-in to my life, which made my life convenient. That's, that's how she felt. That's right. She and, felt. I, and I mean, I totally loved her. Like, with all my heart, I loved her. Um, but I just didn't put the time in there because as a man, my thing was, let me get my, my ducks in a row first, and she's going to be there. And you kind of take it for granted mm -hmm. and feel like, okay, we're in love with each other. That's enough. Mm -hmm. So that's when you stop putting the time in, stop giving her the attention that she needs because you're like, hey, she's going to be okay. We got a whole lifetime for me to give you the time and the attention and everything that you want. But this right here is priority for me. It's urgent. I have to make this happen now. So sure. you kind of lose sight of those things. Sure. I appreciate that, tra that transparency. Um, and, 
Yeah, it's absolutely what it is. If you all feel the need to, to bring something back up, that's cool. You got another question for us? Because I got some stuff for us to get into as well. You all right, well, we're off to a great start with some really awesome answers. Question number two is, gentlemen of the panel, what are some things you look for in a woman? What are some things that you look for in a woman? Couldn't you find another question? Oh, uh, shucks. Um, all right, so, all right, so what are some things I look for or men look for? You look for, my brother, my pastor. Good one. Anybody want to pick up the hot mic? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. All right. Well, I'll, I'll start this one. And uh, I guess when you, you're, looking for someone, especially me, uh, I look for a, a, a spiritual woman, uh, a strong woman that actually know who they are and what they stand for and, uh, you know, basically how they feel about themselves because it's, it's pretty hard to develop a relationship with someone and they're not really sure about themselves, hmm. you know, so they got to feel comfortable within themselves. That's, that's a big priority for me. Got you. All right, so at 60, I understand that that, that season, I get that he's very clear on, on what, you're very clear on what, on what you're looking for. She has to be spiritual, has to be confident, has to know who she is. Uh, any of you all, what is something you ask for? What is something that you're looking for in, in a woman? I'm not sure that the, the younger folks here will understand what this means, but uh, equally yoked. Equally yoked. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> pull out the pull out the right. pull out the Bible and the history right. of this. Yeah. Okay. Right from the good book. Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, she's got to be a woman of God. Okay. Uh, she's got to love him with all before she loves me. She's sure. got to love him, and uh, if we do that together, then he'll be in the center of everything that we do. Nothing can go wrong from that point on. Mm -hmm. And uh, when conflict comes up uh, in that scenario, you take it to the third person. Nobody owns the problem. You throw it on the table, and both of you solve it. And uh, you know, uh, so that's what I look for: is, is that kind of relationship. So it's a free form uh, respect on both sides. Catch gotcha. We hear y'all doing a lot of clapping. It's cool. It's great. You know. You got what you think? What you uh, for me is it, for me is really simple. Um, uh, being in a relationship, like an extensive relationship, long term relationship, off and on relationship, all that type stuff. Yeah. It, it's uh, for me is really simple at this point. As I've matured, uh, just finding a woman who uh, makes me want to be better. That's like that's that's the thing for me now. It's uh, finding a woman that makes me submissive. Mm -hmm. A woman that makes me... Use that S word again. Submissive. Now, a man just heard you say the word submissive. And some man right now is having a hard time understanding that another man just said he needs a woman that makes him want to be submissive. But when you look at Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21, not the rest of the verses. I got to take this. I got to take this, Rock. I'm going to give it back. I'm gonna Preach give it back. to the people, brother. When you look at Ephesians chapter 5 and we start looking at this and talking about, you know, being submissive, it says, you know, woman, you need to be submissive to your husband. The rest of the verses and say, you need to be submissive to me and man, you need to love your. Yeah, but this is, but when you look at verse 5, 21, chapter 5, verse 21, it says both of you all be submissive to one another. See, don't nobody talk about that, though. Nobody talks about, I never, no, no preacher, no pastor ever said, Isaac, you know, you got to be submissive to your wife and your wife has to be submissive to you. All I knew is that the man, the woman had to be submissive to the husband. But my brother, they said that I need a woman who makes me want to be, and I'm sure the woman would say, I need a man who makes me want to be submissive too, but I don't hear too many men saying, I want a woman who makes me want to be submissive because the Bible says that both man and women need to be submissive to one another. That's how you make it work, right? You have to be submissive. It's not just her. It, and, and submission, which I think we could talk about, what do you understand submission to be? Submission is not 
domination. You can put that in your notes. Submission doesn't mean domination, but you said something powerful is that I'm looking for a woman who can challenge me, but a woman who would make me want to be submissive. That word caught me off guard. Um, I asked a question. What do you all understand submission to mean? If anything. Well, me, well, me personally, what I mean by submissive is uh, I'm a Leo, right? So, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm an operations manager. I run an entire plant here in Memphis by myself. So I'm used to being the boss, used to making the rules, used to people doing what I ask them to do. So when I find a woman that makes me say, you know what, I'm not even going to challenge her on this one because of what I've learned in the, 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 I know these guys are way more mature sure. than me, way more experienced, but what I've, what I've learned is a lot of times in the household, when you win, you lose as the man. Mm-hmm. Hey, can you, can you, I mean, we talk, we, we talk, we're not talking, we're not talking to them. We're not talking to them. Put your microphone. Amen Come on, Tony, to speak yeah, to yeah. the yeah. people. Yeah. So, so coming from my background of being like really argumentative, really confrontational, um, I mean, I, I can, I got the gift of gab. I know how to manipulate situations and win arguments. And every time I've done that, I come out feeling good with my, my chest up, chin up, lost. feeling good, but you lose. You won, you won the argument, lost, lost yeah, the relationship. You win the fight, but you lose the battle. Exactly. Would, so, you, uh, would you all agree that that's something that is true, being in, having been married before, and that um, you can't, it's just wise not to feel like you have to win every argument, every battle, and, and if you win, sometimes you end up losing. Right. Yeah, I, I spent most of my life... Uh, Rocky was saying in management and you know when I came home I, I didn't want to manage anymore but I didn't want you know confrontation because it, it, it's just you know you you get into a situation and uh, you bring the work home and you 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 treat the family as though you still at work sure. and, and that's not a that's not a good thing sure and, and it doesn't work it sure. doesn't work sure sure you know? What you want to add to that? Just, and that's what I meant by being submissive, just being at a point of maturity where you realize, look, I don't have to win this argument. Or, look, I don't have to go, we don't have to go where I want to eat. Wherever you want to eat is right, cool. Right. We don't have to do what I want to do all the time because I love you enough to say, hey, baby, you got it. Like, it's, we're sure. going to go do this. We're sure. going to do what makes you happy. Sure. Because what I've realized is, um, and talking to a lot of guys, what I've realized is your woman, her behavior is really just a result of what she's reciprocating whatever energy you're giving out to her. So. Because, because women, as we talked before, women are incubators, right? Women are incubators. They, they, you give them something, you give them a seed, they produce your baby. You give them a house, they bring you a home. They, you, give them, you give them groceries that provide you a meal. But if you give them headache, if you give them trash, they will give you hell. <laughs> They're incubators. No, no, hear what I'm saying. It, it's across the board. You can't have some of it and not all of it. No, if, if so we're reciprocating. So if, you're, if you are not doing your part, you, can, you know, she's only going to give you back for the most part of what you're, you're giving her, what you're giving her. And so it's, yes, sir. Yeah, I just have one, uh, one comment, which is really one simple statement is you always put her first in all cases, mm-hmm. always. Sure. When you get in from a hard day's work, you have to transition to, to home life. I understand sure. that sure. totally because uh, all of us are responsible as, sure. as husbands and significant others to, to, to uh, provide. But uh, regardless of the situation, you have to put them first. And you know, yeah. and, and that's and that's absolutely true. I think it's it's easier said than done, though. Yeah. You know, I think I think. No, you, I mean, because you, cause you're giving me the one word answers. He's getting it straight to the point. Because men, we just get straight to the point. Look, put it first, period. You know, it's just, you know, you know, but, you know, that is something that is harder. It, it may be harder for me. It may be harder for uh, Rocky in the age that we're in because, like I said, I've learned that, um, like one of my things is that I'm, you know, men were leaders, you know, and so I'm leader. And so the thing is, you're always making decisions. You're always putting out fires. And so when you're at home or when you're in the relationship, you're always talking. Um, and when you're communicating, it's always coming off of me as instruction. Right. And so the woman or she feels 
And she interprets my conversation as me talking at her and not to her. Right. And so I learned this. I'm, I am learning this. And so I think that cutting cutting the switch off is so hard. And being submissive, I believe, again, is to respect, honor um, and trust the other person. That's, you know, being submissive and that, all of the other things come into it. But putting your wife first, um, I think. I think as a viewpoint, there's so much we got to talk about. It's so little time. Um, but th- I mean, I think that is absolutely important, but I'm sure someone's saying, well, how do you do that? And what does that mean? Right. And I think we have to kind of walk that thing down. And I'm wondering if we have enough time to do that. Um, so th- here was the deal, because I'm looking at 1037 and I want to keep my job. We're going to still go for a few more minutes. We're going to still go for a few more minutes. There's a couple of things we can do, ladies and gentlemen. We can come back next week with the part two and dive in from 9.35 to 10.30 and get all of this out. Or we can come next week with the women's part. Okay, just want to make sure. We just got to make room for audibles and adjustments. And so uh, there's just much to talk about because I want, I want to be able to get into subjects like what does it mean to be a man, right? How do you define manhood? Because we got to get into that from what it used to be and what 21st century says and how this creates a conflict with us today and what women expect from a relationship and marriage, what men expect and how we're viewing all this and how the truth of the matter is. No, I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to keep that one. Yeah. All right. So you got. Yes, sir. Yes. uh, Whenever you say you idolize, I mean, not idolize, but whenever you, you know, submit to your wife or your other partner, I have to confess that I was that guy that did everything that wanted to make the wife happy. Mm -hmm. And I erased myself after 16 years. I gave into it to where I didn't know who I was. I gave her everything. And that's a tough road because there is a happy medium there of trying to make her happy because she's the only one that can make herself happy. Mm -hmm. And whenever you fall into that, because for 16 years, you know, I did everything that I could. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for that. And so what, this is what I'm, this is what I'm trying to do women. This is what I'm trying to do, man, is that I don't want us to just give some cliche response I want us to dig into this because most women send responses and most women think that you have a monopoly on people not showing up for the marriage and relationship, right? You think you have a monopoly on being put in the friend, uh, friend zone when, in fact, you got a lot of men like I've been put in the friend zone, a lot of men who like, well, I've given, you know, women. So we all experience some of the same things, but I want you to be able to hear it from the mouths of men because if you ever get to a point where men will actually speak, you got to give them a chance to talk and listen. Because... When you, when you women, when you wives, when your man is trying to talk and then you're not listening or then you're trying to jump in and then you wonder why he retreats and never comes back out of the cave, it's because you pushed him there. And so you have to learn if a man is speaking and he's talking and he's sharing, you want to even, you want to give, you want to embrace that moment so it could be more of those moments. And so thank you for that. But I'm just saying that, yes, we put, why, we, put, we put the woman first, but what happens when you put the woman first and then you're going to have a woman say this, I need a man who's going to put me in my place. I need a man who will put his foot down so he can, you know, so I know, because you don't, you want a man that can take charge. You want a man that can be gentle. You want a man that can do all of these things, but that's neither here nor there. All right. So we got time for one more question. We'll let you have questions, but I got some questions we're going to deal with here. So yeah, you get, what, what you got for us? Okay. Question number three. We got time for one more question. This is a good one here. It says, are you gentlemen familiar with the term hanging out or chilling with the woman? What does this really mean? What does it mean if a man puts their relationship with the woman in this category? Chilling 
we got to chill, girl. We're going to have to hang out now. Yeah, that's, that's, what that's, the, that's What's that mean? I'm, I'm, we, we talking amongst ourselves, man. All right, so I think the question is, it's a much more modern. It is. Yeah, you know, look, 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 look. My brother, my brother, like, ah, we don't know nothing about no hanging out, no chill. You know, that's now we we, we got it. No, no. Okay. So, you know, you gonna say something? Yeah, it, hanging out is is normally what guys define. You know, when when we're with their buddies and stuff. You know, you just kind of you're not really doing anything. You're just there with each other and just you know conversation or just you know watching a game or just something like that. Uh, but how you, how old are you again, Tony? Huh? I said, how old are you again, Tony? Uh, <laughs> see, we won't go there. But anyway, <laughs> different perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, but I mean, this, this is why this is why I want the panel to be exactly this, so we can see where the blurred lines come in, right? But just hanging out with with I've I've hung out with with women, and uh, we're basically doing the same thing, you know. He watch TV or just you know uh, maybe out on the grill or something like that. You know, it's just. Uh, it's not a serious relationship, mm -hmm. I guess what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a, it's a friendly relationship that you just feel like that person's a good friend, you can hang out with them. You know? I know You're not trying to take anything to, I, I know. at least for me, the next level. Yeah, you know? I know a woman said we don't see it the same way, you know. Uh, but absolutely, appreciate that perspective. I realized, though, that I didn't, we really didn't fully answer the previous question about what we look for. I don't think I even gave my perspective, so... Yeah, so we're going to go back to it. It's okay. We're going to make sure we deal with all this stuff, you know, anybody. So we're talking about hanging out and chilling. You tell me, you tell me and Rocky, and you tell Tony, what do you understand about this chilling and hanging out? Well, first of all, my generation didn't hang out. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. You know, not it not wasn't with no, women. It, we hung it, out it with wasn't guys. no hanging out. I, I get it. We respect that. We respect that. Yeah, and, uh, you know, but I know that's a more uh, recent term. Sure. And it means it it's, it's can be man or woman. It doesn't make any difference what it is, what sure. sexual it is. Sure. Um, but we just didn't do that, you know, and I, st I never have done that. I've always looked at uh, the, the women as uh, someone that I would want, if I was interested in, that I would pursue. Uh, I wouldn't want to have a casual relationship with them. My casual relationships were the men, basically. Uh, that may be good or bad, but that's where it is now. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Help us. Help us, Rocky. It's, it's your time. It's your time, Rocky. <laughs> well, I appreciate these fellas' perspective on some good, wholesome hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah, y'all. Hallelujah. <laughs> Preach to the people, he brother. Gonna, he going to bring us in 2018. I don't have to say much. This is why This is why I want this panel. This is why I want this panel. But no, really, and all honestly, um, I'm a lot different than a lot of guys. So I, I try to like keep the hanging out to a minimum because I'm the type of guy that if I hang out with a girl that I really like, that's going to be our last time hanging out. Like, Because mm -hmm. I'm going to put a claim on that real yeah, right. quick. Put, put the tag on it. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, so I want to move as, as swiftly as possible sure. to make sure I don't lose out on that. Sure. So, uh, like, any time it's hanging out and it's extensive hanging out, like, yeah. yeah, we've been hanging out for about two, three years, then yeah. that, that's, of course. That's, of course. that's like a, a red flag right there. That it's not really going anywhere, but we enjoy each other's company or, you know, we may go out. Uh, I don't know if I can say this here, but we have no, a couple this of is, drinks. Th no, this is, like this is Red Table. Okay, cool, cool, table. cool. So we ain't I, even talking yeah, to them, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. right. non-alcoholic so, drinks. So okay. yeah, like you know, you go out and you have a couple of drinks or whatever, and you and you kick it, hang out, you enjoy that person's company. As far as personalities go, y'all mesh well, but you don't really see it like being anything serious or anything more than that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, if it was something serious, and like I said, not, not, nothing I say is to put a damp on anybody because everybody's no. situation is different. Right. So I don't want anybody in the in the crowd to be like, in, oh, in I've the, been hanging out with this guy for two right, years, thinking right. he's going somewhere. Right, right, right. Or I could just sit, no, I'm not an expert by right. any means, any stretch of the imagination. But as far as me personally, any girl that or any woman that I've hung out with, you know, for several months or a couple years, that's my buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Right. Yeah, it's not. It's not really moving forward or going anywhere. Is, is, is sex involved in hanging out and chilling? Uh, uh, <laughs> can y'all? Can y'all? Can y'all let us have conversation it's, up here? It's ten forty-six, Isaac. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. It, it is. It I is. think we got time for that it, question. It, it, is, it is. It is 1046. Hey, y'all, listen. Um, <laughs> hey, can, hey, Scott, can you make a note? Can you make a note right there of where we stopped at? We oh, stopped, I know right where yeah. we stopped no, at, my pastor. No, no I, need, I need you. I need you. Okay. I need you to make a note. That we stopped. What was your last word? It was ten forty six. It was. Well, is sex is sex involved in hanging out, right? I think I can remember that. I don't think I need a pen. No, I need. I, 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 I need it for myself. I need it for myself. Oh, he needs it for himself, yeah. y'all. Yeah. Okay, okay, bro. I, 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 I got you. I got. I got. I got. I got, I got it from right here. I got it from right here. Just, just hold. So we're gonna pause it right here. Now, listen. We have far more fodder uh, to discuss, and I think I knew this in my preparation because. It was just too much. It was just so many pages. Um, and I wanted us to have organic conversation, which means it can, it can extend. And so we're going to talk about things that is not just limited to being single, uh, being in a relationship. We talk about things that I think is also applicable to marriages as well, because there's things that you carry in your marriages. There's communication, miscommunication, things that have not been dealt with that I think um, we need to talk about. And women, you want to understand a little bit more about a man, and you won't... You won't hear him when he tries to tell you, but maybe you hear us when we tell you. So he wants you to be here so you can hear us so he can say, see, you know. Um, so um, we want you to be here next week. Invite someone else out. Uh, my friend Lonnie is going to get this up on YouTube. We'll get that up in the next 48 hours, perhaps. Uh, but we want you to listen to it, pass it along. We're going to come back next week. Women, be flexible with us, us men, because um, for once in a lifetime, we're taking a little longer in being able to express what's on our hearts. And um, we want you to be able to receive it. So we're going to have fun. Is this okay with you all? Yeah. All right. So we want you back here next week. We're actually now extending this series one extra week. Um, it wasn't in the plans, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk from the men again. We're going to have some more things. We're going we're gonna to pick up right there at, you know, when we talk about hanging out, is sex involved with that? And we're going to go a little more. In the name of Jesus, I thank God for the opportunity to be able to have honest conversation. I thank uh, God for the opportunity in the space of the church to be able to talk about things that we're wrestling with and we're struggling with that will help us in our journey to be better communicators and better in our relationships. We need relationships to thrive in the kingdom of God. We cannot thrive in the kingdom of God if we are not good at relationships, not just romantic relationships, but all relationships. I'm eager to learn from them and from others. What are some things that you learn from dealing with women? Women. What are some things that still confuse you about the woman species? What are some things that you just can't get wrapped around your head and, and some other things that we're going to talk about? But I, th I really believe that you need to hear from us of how we view manhood, how we view uh, what it means to be a man and how that, I believe, has come under attack um, in many ways and not. And we don't realize it. And even for a woman as well, because we're going to come back in the third week, but there's so many things that we're going to talk about that I believe you would really, really appreciate because we don't usually, in the space of the covenant community, be able to talk about these things. Let me bless you all. God, we thank you for today. I thank you for every person who's on this panel. I thank you for the space to be vulnerable. I pray that you bless these men, these fathers, in a way that only you can bless them. Replenish them where they have void and lack. And allow them, God, to their, their cups to overflow with blessings. Bless every person who is under the sound of my voice. As we leave this place and never from your presence, allow us to receive your word, your Holy Spirit. Today, God, we love you and we thank you for the ability to be transparent. So bless us today, God, like only you can. It's in Jesus Christ's name we sign, seal, and deliver this prayer. Amen. Amen, Amen my pastor.